So I think we're going to start soon. If you'd like to take a seat and sit with us for the next hour. Ready? Okay. Okay, great. So, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be here to present this panel on mapping European documentary. My name is uh, Céline Murat. I am here representing the Documentary Association of Europe. Uh, normally, you would have had the great luck of having the co-director, Marianne Schmidt, to do this panel, but unfortunately, COVID is still a thing, and she couldn't join us in Thessaloniki. So I'm swooping in to talk to these uh, great associations about their work and to discuss how to create a pan-European lobby and the step that we can take towards that. So this panel is a, a collaboration between, of course, Thessaloniki, DocFest, and the Documentary Association of Europe. And I really want to thank Jana Sari and Angeliki Vergu uh, and all the team for welcoming us here today to have this discussion. So to get just started and situate what we're doing here today, the Documentary Association of Europe Day has been working on this mapping European documentary for a few sessions now. They had a big summit in 2020, and subsequently they've had a panel in Turin and a panel in Mallorca to discuss this idea of national associations, thinking about their needs and the challenges of their members and producers and the ecosystem that they live and work in and how these different territories and national associations can come together to lobby at a pan-European and maybe a worldwide level for, the various, for various reasons, all the common challenges and common wants and needs and uh, you know, the utopic world that they want to live in as well. So just to give you an idea, uh, from this summit that was done in 2020, six main findings of this summit. An overwhelming desire for more collaboration and sharing, an overall budget of government subsidies, and an understanding that overall budgets of government subsidies and budgets vary widely from territory to territory, as do slots and just support in general. A wish to create more communication and best practices for the implement wait, implementation of new laws that could serve the entire documentary community internationally. Uh, wanting a new paradigm or creating a new paradigm shift for documentary production companies because I think across the board we've noticed that production companies that purely do documentary are decreasing because financing decreases, the hardships are worse and so you know a need to find a way to support these sustainable production companies. Uh, and finally identifying national assets and amplifying their work so that producers can come to different territories and understand exactly what's going on and foster essentially international collaboration and co-production. And the last finding that they found, which is my favorite, is to create more joy because that's definitely something Day likes to do. So that was their sixth finding, it's an important one. So this panel is about an hour long and we're gonna start with talking to each of the associations that are represented here. And I'm just gonna go in order like this so that there's no special order of preference. So we'll start with Marco. And Marco, please present your association and the landscape of documentary in Greece. And you know, in general, what do you do? How big are you? What are your main activities as an association? What are the general conditions for production of documentary in your territory? Financing, budget size, funding, slots, you know, what's out there for your members to make documentaries? What are some of the major challenges that you're dealing with? And what are you doing to change it in your own association? And mostly, what do your producers want and need? And to what extent do they get to work internationally and, and how? <laughs> it's a lot of questions and I'll reiterate them, don't worry. Uh, but let's, yeah, let's start with you, Marco. I try not forgetting anything you remind, remind me. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that as a documentary filmmaker, we have to uh, be aware of the context of this meeting today, which in uh, doing a war, a terrible war, an aggression, and we are 
in DAE because uh, our association is a member of DAE. They are aware of, of that and uh, DAE has an initiative to support uh, our colleagues in uh, Ukraine. And we are part of it in uh, Elas Doc, our Greek documentary association. We gathered money for uh, our colleagues in, uh, in Ukraine. And uh, please uh, have this in mind all here and uh, give money to our colleagues in, uh, in Ukraine. There is two or three sites. Uh, you can ask a DAE or us site to support them and support them in any way you can do, lobbying and so on, or maybe demonstrating. The, the Russian consulate is two steps from here, Beside, behind the, the Luxembourg Hotel, so you can pass by there altogether. Um, so our association, <laughs> our association, our association, Hellas Dog, uh, also known as a Greek Documentary Association, was founded in early 2013, and the goal was to unify and federate the the documentary community in Greece, which was not until then. And a um, few months after that, we were helped by a big event. It was the closing of the national uh, network uh, in Greece, ERT, was closed by the government. And it was an occasion to uh, the people to gather around us and to grow as an association. And, um, who we are today? We are uh, around uh, 80 regular members, means uh, people who pay, uh, and about more than 250 followers. Um, we don't have any support from uh, any funds, uh, only for specific activities. By the, we have, for specific activities, we have uh, support uh, from uh, Greek Film Center, from uh, a ministry of Culture, or even uh, uh, in association with the festival here. Uh, our main goals uh, from the outstart is to support documentary as a distinct film form, uh, especially creative documentary, and to work for further recognition and promotion nationwide and internationally of the Greek documentary. Um, we have, uh, if you want, four main lines. First is education. We uh, organize uh, seminar and workshops in uh, creative documentary uh, together with Greek Film Center. Masterclass, like we um, made a masterclass um, in, uh, in this festival and this year we gave the idea to the festival to organize this uh, Nils Pack Anderson masterclass. You will have to all to come. It is on uh, Wednesday? Wednesday. At what time? 11 in the morning. Uh, the second uh, line is a promotion of Greek documentary in Greece and abroad. In Greece, we organize every year a kind of festival in Athens. So it's called with eyes wide open. It's a week dedicated to Greek documentaries. And uh, we have the tradition uh, to invite another country at this uh, festival, which is uh, dedicated to Greek film. But we, organize, we have organized the first year to Syria, the second year to Hungary. Uh, then we had COVID, then we have uh, not uh, but uh, I guess next festival was, will be dedicated to Ukraine, of course. Uh, the third line is uh, lobbying, uh, especially for production to decision makers uh, in Greece, which is mostly the um, uh, Greek Film Center. And the main uh, funding, the only funding, I would say, in Greece, is the Greek Film Center. It's a national broadcaster, ERT. There's a new, since a few years ago, National Center for Audiovisual Media and Communication, 
known as ECOME, which is, uh, has uh, uh, expense rebates for, for films. And uh, we, we have filed to extend it to documentaries because he had the regulation which the expenses you have to make uh, in Greece uh, uh, was 100,000 uh, euros, which if you know the budget of uh, documentaries are under, usually under 100,000 um, euros, which was impossible uh, a documentary to be supported. We, we gain that it's, uh, now it's uh, 60,000 euros, I'd say would be uh, documentaries and there are documentaries now who have this uh, uh, support of this fund and uh, they are the only way to find money in Greece there are not or maybe you can find a local association of winemakers or olive uh, oil makers or winemakers yes we have an example here uh, it's very difficult to find uh, locally in, uh, you can find, but it's, very, it's not organized nationwide uh, to find the support of a local a region or something like that. So it's difficult, the financing of a Greek documentary, it's a big problem for us. Uh, the, and the other uh, line is uh, developing the community of the documentary filmmaker. Uh, we organized this festival and we organized another event and we have now the idea to uh, make something uh, twice a month uh, which we will call Doc Club, which will be regular meetings between uh, filmmakers which could be a master class, it could be uh, screening, screening of rough cuts, screen our project and so on. And, uh, Developing the, the, the last line, developing the international corporations uh, in all the sectors. And we succeed with you, with the AE, to be part of the AE. And we had, uh, when we had a problem with the media program, the new regulation of media program, we have been uh, active on that a bit late. So we didn't get what we wanted. Uh, but it was important to federate all together and uh, develop international push to develop uh, international cooperation, for example, uh, for the National Greek Channel uh, Network, ERT, with, the Ar with Arte uh, in Europe, in France and Germany, because there were co-productions, there is no more and so on. Um, so what are your, your main problems? You guessed through what I said, the, the main problem, main issues if you want, is the funding. Uh, we have only these two or three sources of funding. Uh, we have of course a new, some new, uh, these three sources I told before, and we have some new, to be fair, we have this uh, new um, private channel from the, which is from the historical uh, telecom company in Greece. We have a channel uh, now, Cosmote TV, but it's with men and mostly interesting only in a historical documentary and, uh, and a cultural documentary, not at all in a so uh, social documentary. Um, ah, yes, I forgot that what one of the uh, promotion uh, abroad we have is the, our participation to the sunny side of the dock. We have a kiosk now, the, the last uh, two or three years, and which is important, and we succeeded to, to promote some uh, documentary international, Greek documentary internationally, where they find uh, uh, distributors. Uh, we, for the promotion, we also made, uh, uh, develop our website. We have a data, database uh, of filmmakers and film, and we are uh, organizing to build uh, through that a platform where you can find uh, film, uh, Greek documentary films. Uh, what else? 
No, the, the only, the, only, the other issue we have, the, it's of course, uh, I think everybody has, here is a distribution, how to, we know how to, uh, to make our films, even if the money is not big, we know to promote it, but we don't know how to sell it and distribute it. And see, this, I think it's a problem internationally, and uh, we have to find new ideas through new platforms, through new websites and things to, you know, to, to show our movies uh, inside and abroad. Uh, there is this, because she was uh, a representative, was uh, there at the pitching forum this morning, this uh, new platform, Sinobo, which helps now for documentary too. Uh, you have a creative the documentary there, which was a uh, uh, help, not uh, economically, because it doesn't pay much, but, uh, but we have a window, which is important. The other main issue in Greece is education. Education to film generally and uh, specifically to documentary. There is no exactly professional film school in Greece. There is only a uh, department of uh, filmmaking here in uh, Thessaloniki. There is a um, uh, master in uh, documentary in uh, Aegean University, but there is not really a professional film school and uh, in the private film school or departments in the university, there is not a specific department for documentary. So we will have to think about it. Uh, and uh, we, don't, we don't have access so much to co-productions. This, uh, this has been developed the last, I uh, would say, 10 years. There was an important initiative from uh, ERT, then when uh, Mr. Spiropoulos was in charge. Uh, we get to know uh, people uh, from, uh, from EDN and so on, and uh, they bring uh, a commissioning editor from uh, other international channels, European channels, and we, we started to co-produce. But it's still difficult. Very few companies uh, have succeed here, succeeded here to co-produce, very few companies. And I think our assets, assets, too, we have to tell, tell the good things. Assets, one big assets, asset is this festival here. We have a, a very important international documentary film festival in Greece, which is important. And uh, the second asset, asset is a human potential. There is a great interest in, uh, in the profession for documentary. There are a lot of new uh, Greek documentary filmmakers who studied abroad mostly and we, you can see there are a, a lot of uh, Greek documentary films these years. I think it's all if you have someone to want to add something. Thank you Marco. Um, we'll keep going to the next, maybe we keep going, yeah? We show the clip at the end if we have time because we want to keep talking. So Lucia will move on to you. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Uh, first of all, thank you again for, yeah, to Thessaloniki and to also all of you to be here. I think it's really important because we, we all work really hard at, at a national level and, and of course each country has its own needs and its own regulations uh, and uh, it's important to work nationally but it's uh, always time and it's really important to talk to each other and, and, and see what we can do internationally. So I think it's really important. So um, I will briefly talk uh, about a uh, few things about the kit. Uh, the kit is the Italian Documentary Association. It's, uh, it's been working since 1999. So it's 23 years uh, now. And now we have around 150 members. Our members are, of course, uh, production companies, but also authors, distributors, festivals, and uh, professionals working in the industry. 
Um, so, the, um, sorry, because I get nervous when I talk uh, in public, so I get some notes. And so, we, the, the, um, the most important thing that, uh, that we do um, is to represent the interest of the documentary makers, first of all, in, uh, in, to the institutions. So, uh, we're talking about, of course, the regulations with the Ministry of Culture, but also with the regional funds. And of course, we are constantly in contact with the public broadcaster, because as you probably know, in Italy, we have yeah, the national fund, and then there are all the regional funds, which are like growing in the next few years, which is a good thing. Some, sometimes they're not really, they don't have all the uh, same regulations, so it's quite like also hard to put the funds together. How many together. regions? Oof, uh, I, I, I'm afraid I will say something wrong. I think... Uh, Ballpark. No. Uh, most of the region they have the funds, so but not all of them right now. But I will say yeah, 15 at least, yes. So, uh, but I don't want to be mistaken. I can take you later. Uh, uh, okay, and then yeah, one important thing is that finally, uh, since a couple of years, we have a um, documentary department in our public broadcaster. This is one of the. Um, reasons why the kit is it working? Yeah, okay. Uh, one of the reasons why the kit was born it was because uh, our public broadcaster didn't have a department for the documentary, and finally two two and a half years ago, um, we we finally had it. It's slowly, really slowly, as in Italy, uh, sometimes happens. Uh, the bureaucracy is hard. So what we're trying to do is really. Um, talk to them and be uh, and to bring to them like uh, to acknowledge how the independent production for documentary works in Italy and to to see how uh, yeah we in one way we can help them to yeah to work better on uh, in terms of co-production especially uh, so this is one of the things uh, we're doing now um, we uh, we do also don't have uh, fundings for our uh, yeah, institutional activities, so uh, we um, we have some activities supported by the Ministry of Culture and other funds, and um, I, I will just name two of them uh, that they are the the ones that we do internationally. Uh, one of them is IDS Italian Doc Screenings. Uh, with the first, um, the first edition was in 2004, and actually it was the first market in Italy dedicated to Italian documentaries with uh, an international potential to find international partners. And since 2015, we, um, we started the training program inside IDS for authors searching for producers. And then since two years, we uh, added another training program focused on documentary series. Um, so because, yeah, we, we think with also with OTTs and streamers, uh, there's, uh, yeah, we think it's really important to also have a training program on that, also in, for development stage, for writing and for producing. Um, and then we have another important activity is uh, that since yeah, more than 15 years we have uh, Italian delegation to international markets. Uh, we get some of the delegation are supported by the Italian Trade Agency, which is a governmental agency under the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs. So we manage to bring Italian, mainly producers, uh, to now we have hot dogs, uh, CPH dogs, uh, Sunnyside and Itfa, and to support them economic, economically first to go to the markets and then with each uh, market we try to find the, um, some activities to focus on their project or to help them networking in the market. Um, regarding the goals, uh, it's a really tough question. Uh, <laughs> I mean, what uh, the the main goal I would say is to work uh, uh, as a, as I said before. Right now, the the urgency is to work with the public broadcaster because it's really important, also in terms of co-productions, actually. 
Um, and then we are working uh, a lot in the past few years, especially to uh, connect more internationally. Uh, with, yeah, it's like what we're doing now, but um, because, yeah, at, it, it's what I said before. We, we really need to focus on what's going on in our country, but then to be really strong and to grow the industry, we need to go out and, and be together in this. Um, so, I don't know, it's, um, we're fa I think we are facing a huge market change. Of course, COVID, as we saw, it accelerated uh, a lot the process. So one one big issue, I think, it, it also is the um, changing of the <clears throat> broadcasters and streamers. So this is something uh, really something we need to face and we need to deal with and we need to to yeah to to understand together how to do it. Um, another, uh, another thing I wanted to add, and then I will pass, um, is that uh, it's also really important uh, to talk about data and to share in the data. This is something we are uh, trying to do with, first with the public broadcaster, also in terms of how much they invest in documentaries, because we actually don't, don't know it. Uh, and and data, especially for OTTs, because we need to, to get it, yeah, it's a knowledge to know what's going on internationally for a documentary. So, yeah. Thank you. I'm making notes. Distribution, data collection. We will discuss this at the end together. Martichka, you're next. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Martichka Bozilova. Um, I've been a film producer uh, for documentary films. Now I'm producing also other um, type of films, uh, but I'm here to represent uh, Balkan Documentary Center. You can refer to the slides over there. I don't know if there are other screens around, uh, but uh, it's, a, it's an organization, association uh, based in Sofia. Uh, we started it uh, already many years ago, out of necessity, together with uh, uh, my fellow producers, filmmakers, uh, activists from the region, uh, uh, because uh, we figured out that without uh, consolidation and solidarity between each other, we couldn't be, we, we can hardly be visible on the international uh, market. Uh, so, Balkan Documentary Center uh, is a physical place, on one hand, uh, in downtown Sofia, uh, you can uh, see a part of the house, there is a beautiful garden and a top roof uh, balcony, uh, but also uh, there is a symbolic idea behind it, because uh, we want to be uh, the home for documentary um, uh, cinema in the in the region. Um, uh, recently, we turned ten years, uh, like a couple of years ago, uh, and here you can see the map of countries that uh, we try to cover with our activities, with our programs. Uh, but of course, this is just to. Um, remind you if you in case you don't know but of course you you know very well uh, the balkan region um, but uh, also the idea is to link to make uh, to facilitate the link between our countries in this region with the rest of the world with the rest of europe uh, so we try to concentrate on this uh, uh, i must say that uh, in most of the countries uh, the documentary film industry is very weak or it's been successful at some years, then it goes down, so it's not stable, it's, it's not uh, uh, sustainable. Um, the television hardly works, uh, censorship is really uh, present, and um, we, we try with our activities to facilitate this process, to advocate uh, this to be uh, improved. Uh, we, we do two main programs um, that um, uh, try to help filmmakers in different stages of development of their projects. Uh, one program is for project development, it's called BDC Discoveries. Uh, 
uh, it's our oldest program. Uh, it's been really uh, stable. Even at some moments, we didn't have any funding for it, but we were trying to be sustainable and keep on doing it. Uh, now we are um, uh, very happy to have uh, for this uh, program uh, support from Creative Europe Media already for a uh, long-term uh, period. Um, uh, we, we have we have our deadline very soon, 21st of March. I wanted to say because probably anybody in the room, uh, some of you have project in development, and you can apply. Uh, it's an annual program. Um, it uh, it uh, takes place throughout the year with three sessions, and uh, we invite experts to to help you develop uh, the projects. Um, here you can see also other uh, moments from uh, BDC discoveries, public screenings. Uh, we, we are giving uh, very nice cash prices. Also, uh, we, we um, uh, partner with a lot of festivals, uh, like big festivals with uh, industry sections uh, around Europe, like ITFA, DOC Leipzig. So it's, it's been part of, of the awards uh, for our projects. Um, another very, very important program that you probably have heard of is, is called uh, Documentary Rafkat Boutique. Uh, and uh, we try to facilitate uh, the projects at a very fragile stage uh, of uh, post-production, like advanced post-production. Uh, we invite top editors and um, uh, agents and uh, impact producers to uh, meet with our five projects that we select every year uh, out of the region. For this uh, program, we expand a little bit the region of the Balkans and we, uh, we take projects from Hungary, Austria, Caucasus region. And uh, it's something absolutely new, is that from this year um, we, we would accept projects from Ukraine as well. Um, uh, for this program, uh, we are co-organizers with uh, Sarevo uh, Film Festival. Uh, so it's, we give a lot of visibility to these five uh, selected projects. And of course, red carpet experience, because it's a big festival. Uh, yeah, you can see here the moments from the house, from the workshops, uh, the editing workshop, uh, like group sessions in the garden. Uh, here you can see uh, the award ceremony from Sarajevo International Film Festival of um, our uh, participants at Dokuravkat Boutique. Uh, uh, those are some of our success stories. Um, from our programs, um, films that have been multiple awarded and shown at many uh, festivals around the world. Um, recently, like in uh, 2020, uh, being based in Sofia and um, facing really a lot of troubles to, uh, to make documentary films visible, uh, because in Bulgaria there haven't been any international documentary film festival so far. Uh, we decided to take this risk and even during the pandemic we opened a brand new festival uh, which is called uh, Sofia Documento and the first edition went very successful and it gave us a strength to uh, continue and in 2021 we did it physical in uh, three venues with open air experiences, etc. Um, I must say that um, I live in a country where uh, uh, we are at the place 112, uh, according to the index uh, for freedom of speech, uh, which is really the lowest, even I think it's lower than Hungary really the bottom line, <laughs> maybe Turkey <laughs> is a candidate to be even uh, at a lower place than us. Uh, but it was, really, it was really important that this festival um, is, is over there and uh, some new community of audience um, uh, is being developed. 
Um, yeah, so uh, this is our information uh, that you can find us, uh, our website. Um, uh, well, yeah, I wanted to say that last week we did also within the festival a mini, a mini festival on Ukraine and we screened one of the latest really great films on the topic and we had amazing experience with the audience. Uh, people were paying tickets for 50 euro, 100 euro to watch these films uh, and we, we saw everything with different eyes, of course. Uh, so we are trying our best from our perspective to, to approach this, this war and to, to raise the voice against it. Thank you. So it's interesting, you represent a, like the Balkan countries, so it's not a national association, but a conglomeration of countries that have already decided to well, we lobby not, together We are in a not way. representing it, but we have really, uh, throughout the years, very uh, big already know-how know on the region. We know the filmmakers, we know the industry there. Uh, so we can really uh, participate with our know-how and our knowledge on the region. Yeah. Thank you. Laszlo, to you. Um, hello everyone, I'm uh, Laszlo Jozsa, I'm uh, from Hungary and uh, I'm a documentary producer. Um, uh, I'm, one of the, I'm running one of those companies who cannot live only on documentaries, so we also produce commercial work and uh, other types of moving image. Uh, but I'm here now representing the Hungarian Documentary Association and uh, this is probably the youngest association of, uh, of the previously mentioned ones. Uh, we um, uh, have 130 members. Very similarly work uh, like the Italian partners. Uh, we also um, have members of uh, producers, directors, but everybody basically is welcome from the documentary field. So. Um, even cinema owners, uh, local cinema distributors, journalists are part of the organizations. We, um, we founded the organization in uh, 2020 uh, during the Budapest International Documentary Festival just before pandemic started with uh, high hopes um, uh, and um, so it was for our first year, it was very hard to be visible internationally, actually, but um, um, we, um, uh, we started, actually, the first action we did is uh, we did a one-week online screening of the most successful Hungarian documentaries, and it, uh, it had a huge, uh, huge viewership online, and, uh, and it gave the association in Hungary visibility in the first week, which uh, we were quite um, proud of. And um, the association is, um, is uniting documentary filmmakers, uh, but it, it also works as an advocacy forum. So a forum uh, like a bridge between audience, uh, Hungarian documentary filmmakers, decision makers, and uh, connections to foreign partners. and. Uh, our aim is to uh, promote Hungarian documentary inside the country and on European platform as well. Um, um, I, I brought a sh short trailer of recently made Hungarian clips uh, because it's my company name over there and I just want to make sure you see the name of the association as well. So if you can play that clip, I would be really grateful. Története úgy kezdődik, hogy megszületik. Van, akinek egy anyukája van, és van, akinek még. I never realized these were emotions. I knew anger. That's it. Nem vagyok a rock viselkedni. A
爱的美人。It's, uh, I just realized that it has the logo of the uh, Hungarian National Film Institute, but uh, they're not backing us. So, <laughs> uh, on a on a everyday level, but um, we work. Uh, uh, our, our budget uh, is is based on uh, membership fees, and also we do have uh, some events uh, that we organize that is uh, has been backed up by the Film Institute, and uh, this trailer was. Uh, actually made by, made for uh, FIPADOC's Visegrad Focus. Uh, FIPADOC uh, last year um, or, um, organized their festival with a Visegrad country focus, so, and this kind of met uh, the um, political willingness of uh, our country, of like strong uniting uh, with the Visegrad country stronger, so, we managed to get some money from them, and uh, I'm quite proud of them. But uh, on, a, on a daily basis, we organize uh, film clubs in Hungary. We have uh, three uh, film clubs running currently. One is uh, focused on, on women filmmakers. Uh, they are co-financed by a local municipality. The other is... Um, showing uh, social documentaries, uh, and the third one is just about to start. Uh, we also um, collecting data, as uh, you also mentioned. Uh, we uh, made a website uh, with all our members, uh, almost all our members uh, with their CVs, recently made films. Uh, we also um, um, collecting um, films that uh, are uh, forgotten or the rights of the films, maybe older films that uh, have been uh, shown at times, maybe in, on uh, one TV channel, but then never showed again and giving, uh, trying to produce an online platform for these films. So uh, to have some kind of visibility. And as I mentioned, our first uh, activity was uh, was going uh, to the media and showing some of the best films online. Uh, and uh, with that, we already started building um, a Facebook page and, uh, and a newsletter site to collect uh, the audience. So we are a young organization, but we are constantly growing um, uh, our audience and communicate with them directly. We. Um, Actually, the idea of forming Hungarian Documentary Association came um, in 2018 during the Sarajevo Film Festival because at that time there were three Hungarian films in uh, competition in Sarajevo and um, we tried to um, ask our film institute to do some kind of promotion for this film. We were really proud that we were in the documentary program in this uh, biggest regional festival. It was the mo uh, most represented country and uh, nobody in the Film Institute even thought this would be an issue. They should be doing anything about it. So um, four independent Hungarian producers decided to launch a, a small industry event uh, anyways in Sarajevo with the help of, of um, of uh, Rada Sasic and uh, actually uh, at that year, uh, almost in every year in the uh, Dokuravka boutique, there is the Hungarian film as well. So this is one of our bases as well. I was kind of upset that we're not included in the Balkans. I, <laughs> I know, but I consider sometimes the West Balkans, uh, Hungary somewhere in between the West and the Balkans. So um, we are also uh, building uh, Partnerships with similar organizations. Uh, we have met uh, the Visegrad country organizations in the Yiklava festival uh, um, it was last year, and uh, we keep contact with them, and I'm really happy to be here. Some of you I know for a long time, but some of you i just getting to know. We're also part of uh, some of our members of there, like Juliana Ugrin, I think she's in... The, the board as well. Um, um, one other thing is that uh, when we Hungarian filmmakers go to international film festivals, 
um, pitching forums, uh, um, workshops. We never meet any Hungarian broadcaster or anyone from our film institute. And uh, um, I, I would consider recent, the past 10 years of Hungarian documentary films quite successful in festivals. We've been present in over 60 countries uh, with prices, over 100 prices. Uh, in festivals, but uh, we found no real recognition of our work. And, um, and I only met one um, commissioning editor in my life from Hungary, uh, and this was in Medimed um, uh, from the Hungarian uh, uh, television, and I met her on my transport from airport to um, to um, see Jess, and she said she is coming for holiday only. <laughs> and that was a kind of shopping, sh shocking, but instead of uh, complaining, uh, we decided to take, uh, unite the, the, the industry back home and then step by step start building or uh, help our work being recognized and not complain so much, which is, uh, I think, a very uh, widespread Hungarian tradition complaining. Maybe it's regional as well, but... Um, about uh, Hungarian film financing, um, uh, there is a lot of money in, uh, in Hungarian film. Uh, um, this uh, shift or the money in the Hungarian Film Institute started coming in uh, at at the time when Orban came into power, uh, it's no relation, but then they reformed the, the Hungarian Film Institute and the head of the institute became uh, uh, um, Andy Wein, a former Hollywood producer, decided to reform the film and industry and he made uh, quite a big success um, with uh, fiction films. So in these 10 years, um, uh, we had an Academy Award winner, a fiction film, a short film, um, uh, but uh, documentary in his eyes was uh, completely, uh, he wouldn't even consider it film. So with that, uh, our situation is, uh, that's why in the past 10 years, it was individual efforts of filmmakers and without any kind of, um, uh, industry uh, support or decision maker support. So, um, um, as I said, there's a lot of money in Hungarian uh, film, mostly going into fiction, but uh, um, there is a um, um, there used to be a broadcasting fund, and most of these Hungarian films were. Uh, find that made it to festivals, feature length uh, films were made on a TV budget and very, very low uh, amounts. Uh, I think the top was like 30,000 euros uh, that we could get and uh, also on the distribution side there was no partner, no TV, uh, whatever. So this is also one of our goals which we have started to uh, gather the works, the successful works we've done in the past uh, uh, years and present it to uh, um, broadcasters together. So um, there are no commissioning editors and I don't know slots so, uh, as well for documentaries, but uh, some films which uh, reached international success managed to make it to uh, to broadcasting like uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the eu euphoria of being uh, made it to um, one uh, Locarno Film Festival and it had a TV premiere or there are three or four examples like that. Um, and um, what else? Because I could talk for hours. Um, uh, yeah, but this, yeah, this for panel one, is only yeah, going to be one yeah, one, one important thing is, um, Technically, there is no possibility in Hungary at the moment uh, for international co-productions. Um, uh, in, in the application field, there is no call for minority co-production or any kind of co-production. There is a little bit of gap in, um, in the financing system. So if you, any of you producing a Hungarian-related topic or work in Hungary, then there is a chance 
for co-production and also if you get uh, your budget uh, from the TV fund uh, then uh, then you are able to co-produce with other countries also um, what I have to mention that in Hungarian uh, documentary market there is one uh, lucky thing that happened to us is that HBO Europe is uh, located, the headquartered in Hungary and uh, I think uh, Hanka Kastelitsova has been doing the work of our film fund for the past 10 years, uh, helping, uh, I don't know if she's around, but... Uh, she, she's definitely in town, help, while she's here. Helping uh, filmmakers, uh, giving a chance to first-time filmmakers, uh, um, which is a lot of help, and then that also um, was a key to the success of uh, these Hungarian films on international platform. And um, uh, one other thing which I, um, which helps uh, Hungarian filmmakers, but uh, the documentary producers haven't been able to, uh, because of the lack of, uh, um, uh, proper possibilities for co-production. We do have a 30% tax rebate, and uh, uh, which is automatic. So it actually tops up budgets uh, 30%, and it's uh, it's uh, accessible for foreign productions as well. So uh, it's another um, example that there is possibility and money in Hungary, but we have to find a way to uh, to bring uh, projects uh, or co-produce with others and and use this kind of 30% as actual money not just virtual money um, and um, well, yeah i have to mention that we do, we do have uh, two uh, recognized international festivals one is versio international documentary festival it's a human rights festival it has been um, organized partly by Central European University who have been, how to say, kicked out of the country, but the festival stays and uh, uh, the other is uh, Budapest International Documentary Film Festival, which are showing the best films, so it's not a premier festival, but it's uh, for Hungarian audience collecting the best documentaries in the year and showing to the audience with a lot of success in ticket wise so um, yeah we can continue the conversation yeah. because I might just lose my you. train of thought. Well thank you for giving us a deep dive into how it works in, in Hungary and, um, and thank all four of you for the details that you give us about your own territories and who you work with so we don't we have we'll take a bit of more time it's ending towards the hour because we focused a lot on your associations but I, I do really want to spend some time discussing why all of you would be members of the Documentary Association of Europe, for example, and why you would want to get to know each other more to create this idea of a pan-European lobby. So I'll go from each of you, with each of you, but you know, what are the points that you think your European association, your own association can get behind to have a pan-European lobby? What are the main challenges or what are the things, you know, I've, I've been gleaning, like data sharing is important. I hear distribution in general. The idea that documentary as a form should be recognized. These are uh, issues and challenges or wishes that all of you have and that together you can bring to, for example, media, Creative Europe, Rimage, uh, you know, so what are, yeah, what are the, what are the, overall challenges you think or just the wishes you have that mean that all four of you with your different situations can collaborate together. We, we talk uh, each of us a little about that. Uh, so there are two challenges I think it's uh, one is distribution of course. Distribution because the distribution is changing now. Uh, this, uh, because with the development of the platform, it was uh, accelerated by the pandemic. Um, and so there are initiatives we could make, and I think this collaboration, international collaboration, and regional collaboration will be very important. And for us in Greece, I think, uh, this for production and distribution, I, and I think uh, the idea of, uh, they have in a Balkan, uh, of a Balkan region 
it's very important because we see in Europe the major uh, there is we want or we don't want there are some uh, collaboration in Europe you know you have those big countries in uh, I mean uh, in a filmic uh, meaning you have the France you have Germany uh, you have UK I don't know if UK in, in Europe or not but and then uh, you have Italy too uh, uh, Spain and then you have small countries uh, small countries like in uh, Nordic countries but we are very dynamic very dynamic in a filming term and they are dynamic because they have a, a, a region collaboration very strong if you make a film in Denmark you immediately find the uh, Finland uh, Norway Sweden to collaborate with you uh, I think and the collaborative institution are collaborating, not only the, the filmmakers and the, the producers, the, the institution. And it's very, very been important, it's maybe a bit egoistic in this discussion, but the collaboration in the Balkan and the southeast of Europe. And uh, Hungary, of course, is in it, you know, because, uh, okay, because of history. Um, and so, you, you know, this. This is starting to work. We see some collaborations, some co-productions uh, between Greece and Turkey, Greece and uh, Northern Macedonia, and things like that. But institutionally, there is no uh, agreement between, uh, I don't know, uh, Serbian, uh, Northern Macedonian, Greek, Turkish film centers. There is no, you know, such a thing we have to uh, to lobby or to fight for it. It will be very important. And I think in terms of uh, production, co-production and distribution will be very important. Uh, well, yeah. Um, yeah. It's a tough question. Yeah, I, I really think now, um, because Marco was uh, speaking also about this, I think uh, we all feel the same. I mean, we, we, need, we have the need to improve the co-productions because this is, I think, the only way to really have, like, um, yeah, to work properly on a project, which is, can be really hard, but at the same time can be really, uh, yeah, it can, a project can grow. So, um, I don't know, maybe this is too much, but try to find like some common grounds that we can take to, to Europe also to work on, on a national level, to have like, um, it, it, it's really hard, it's a topic, I know, but, uh, but you know, because I, I also see that in Italy it's really difficult to co-produce with other countries because it, we have uh, a really big issue of timing to know if uh, um, producers got the project from the Ministry of Culture because sometimes it takes one year to get to know the results and the public broadcaster doesn't give the letter of interest with the money on it so it, it, it's really hard to co-produce so yeah I, I don't know how actually but it, it mm, we can try to think like the, the first steps to, to go in that direction because we really need to co-produce to, to have, yeah. So. Ah, sorry. Um, well, you speak of this idea of co-producing um, and having, well, I think that ties into data sharing as well. So the, maybe if you're, if it was known that in Italy you need to, or that to work with Italy, you need to know a year in advance and you need to wait and there's all the, you know, the, this kind of knowledge would facilitate the producers of different countries understanding each other better. Martichka, you were going to say something. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. And uh, that, uh, this um, uh, philosophy of the co-production uh, has been, from the very beginning, uh, one of our main goals uh, of our programs, of the existence of Balkan Documentary Center. And, uh, well, um, it's still a grassroots job, you know, uh, but uh, we, I have to say that 10 years ago was really difficult. Now it, it doesn't get any better, but, but still uh, a lot of companies have been created 
uh, independent documentary film production companies uh, with, uh, with more ambition to uh, go international. A lot of co-productions have been created within, at least within our network. Um, and people continue uh, collaborating after finishing our programs. Uh, but of course, I can imagine this is something like little part of the whole process. So um, we've been always trying to, um, to uh, advocate um, in front of European institutions uh, to not to have this second rate Europe, you know, like the so-called low capacity country in the, in the corner, uh, which have been always a struggle, uh, political struggle even. Uh, but uh, we, 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 ha we need to do that, and we have to continue doing it. Yeah, and in the Balkan Documentary Center that was part of you all getting together was exactly that, to create this power and numbers and countries who understand each other and had bigger lobby. So how do you, like in your mind, how do you get the bigger players that we mentioned, the French, the Germans, to kind of get on board with this as well? Like, how do we get them there? Because actually we don't have any representatives of, from there, but what do you think? What's the good way to, to really make it like pan-European so that we can all together kind of go to different, you know, ask for more, ask for the documentary to be recognized as a form? What, what other ways in which we have, yeah, what other things do we all have in common in your mind? I think good start is just to, um, to, to get the know-how. I mean, what is, what is around in the industry? Where are the places? Uh, and uh, to learn how to become stronger and more visible. And uh, this can happen only throughout being part of these networks, of these processes, because otherwise you stay at home and uh, with a lot of mistrust uh, in yourself. And uh, this doesn't go anywhere. It's, it's hard to change the word from, uh, from Hungary, but uh, actually uh, what you said, I was curious whether it's possible to unite uh, this, or to make, because we filmmakers and associations communicate and collaborate with each other, but uh, film funds regionally don't uh, really talk to each other. And uh, this is what we've been trying to do on Hungarian level, to. Um, to, to change the situation that uh, some of the decision makers, film fans or, or broadcasters are not around at these events, to maybe take them and uh, hand in hand and uh, represent our country, share our knowledge. And I don't want to be um, showing a big face that our knowledge is so big, but the fact that we have co-produced with other countries, we have working relationship, uh, we have... Uh, success stories on our own. Uh, maybe on a high level we could organize some kind of uh, communication and because on our level, filmmakers level, it's happening. I don't know if it's realistic or completely unrealistic, but I would really like the Hungarian Film Fund to sit down with some of their Scandinavian partners and just share best practices or works. And uh, I have to tell you a story how, and I've been saying this on and on, uh, our uh, first um, feature-length feature documentary, Ultra, uh, was um, uh, international co-production between HBO, uh, Wiley in Finland, and, um, and uh, um, Anamon uh, in Greece, um, and uh, I was a first time filmmaker and I managed, uh, I'm really proud that we managed to do that. And, uh, and I've been telling my partners that uh, the Finnish national TV did a very different premiere, a much uh, more advanced uh, premiere than the Hungarian uh, partner would have done international TV. So they thought about one year ahead when our film would be, um, um, it, it, it's about Spartathlon, a Greek running race, and they, uh, they, they put it on TV when this running race was over. On TV there was interview with the, with the most uh, important uh, Finnish uh, ultra runner. They created a buzz around our film in Finland, and I was like, 
this, uh, this would be fantastic if this practice uh, I could somewhere share with my decision makers to show that uh, in some other countries they care about our films more than in my country, but I don't, I don't know how to make this kind of bridge at the moment. I can only convince my Hungarian film fund to, to try to accompany us to some of the events and, and listen and talk. Maybe that's your utopic wish, this bigger uh, ability to have a bigger conversation. Because Celine, you insist on data, and you're right to insist on data. Uh, I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, because uh, uh, DAE, it's uh, quite a new association, but it came after the, the death of EDN. Okay. EDN had made incredible work on uh, data and uh, where are those data? Couldn't you inherit it, <laughs> those data and continue? I mean, it would be stupid to start from the beginning because uh, for years the, the work, incredible work has been done. Well, it's, it's true that uh, Day is maybe even younger than your association. <laughs> uh, it, it was launched in uh, at the Berlin Alley 2020, so it like existed in real life for one month before it went completely online. And now it's back to being in the world again. Um, yes, the work of ED and the guide that they had, all the financing, all these things. I know I, I, I'm here representing Day, and I know what they're working on, and they're working on exactly that. Uh, but maybe making it uh, like even more accessible by it being online, by it being uh, done in collaboration with a group of different associations, probably you'll be contacted, and it would be more than uh, the num you know the phone numbers and addresses and slots of the different funds and you know what's going on in each country, but more than that, maybe case studies, like really building on this idea of uh, how the different territories and associations can understand each other better in hopes of internationally collaborating, you know, co-producing, but just understanding sometimes that if you land in another place as a filmmaker, you can meet the others. And that, that I think that definitely is part of Day's big work is that, that uh, bringing about transparency and equity. And you know, Day is the Documentary Association of Europe, but what the co-directors always say is that it's Europe and the rest of the world. Everyone's welcome uh, if you want to. So ideally it'll, start in Europe and then it'll expand to, you know, to the rest of the world as well. But this idea of transparency, equity, data sharing, yeah, those are the, the basics. And we were discussing before uh, with um, Lucia before this started that uh, even more so maybe what would be amazing would be this best practices. So the understanding that there isn't, actually this is maybe the interesting thing about a if this documentary industry is that there are no rules set in stone except the ones by which you are governed in your own territory, say the rules of your film fund, the rules of your broadcaster and the contracts that they have. But outside of that, there are no rules. There are just traditions of how people do things. And a lot of those traditions are often mired in complexity and obscurity and old networks and little privileged clubs, etc. And the idea of having a pan-European open conversation about the best practices, fair co-production. That's one of the great ideas of getting together also, I think. Anyway, I think maybe we, uh, it, we're a little bit past already, we're 10 past seven, and I know there's a cocktail hour over on the other side of the building. So maybe, and we didn't uh, even get to ask the audience uh, what they were saying, but uh, because I think we may have to be shutting this down and looking for someone who works here. But maybe we can continue this conversation over at the cocktail hour all together. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Agora. And uh, because Marion will see this, Marion, get better soon. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you, everyone.